Welcome back. I'm Logan, your host for the Daily Bible Reading Podcast, where we are journeying through the Bible chronologically, taking it one day at a time. Today is day number 106. I'm so glad that you've decided to make this podcast a part of your day. If you are using our official reading plan, available down in the show notes if you haven't accessed it already, you get to turn a page today as we start week number 16. With the beginning of a new week comes a weekly check-in. How are things going? Please go over to our Facebook group. Join that group so you can let me know how things are going for you. Are you confused about anything? Has God spoken to you in some amazing way? Share it. Share it with our community so that we can pray for one another. We can encourage one another as we grow in the Word of God. Today, we're going to be looking at five more Psalms as David is still on the run from Saul. He's still fleeing for his life, and he is still writing lots of songs and prayers down as he does it. We're going to be looking at Psalm 56, Psalm 120, and Psalm 140 to 142. But as always, before we get started, let's pray and ask that God would open up his word so that it would affect us richly, that our hearts may not leave unchanged, but that through our reading, we would bow before our King and our God. Today's prayer comes from the book Piercing Heaven, Prayers of the Puritans, collected by Robert Elmer. This prayer is entitled, Cleanse Me, Emmanuel, and it's by the Puritan Robert Hawker. Dear Emmanuel, in whom alone and by whom alone all my hopes and confidences are founded, I fall down at your feet. As the prophet cried out, so I desire unceasingly to exclaim, I am a man of unclean lips. But if you cause the iniquity to be taken away and my sin to be purged from me, I will be clean. For you are our New Testament altar. You are the Lord, my righteousness. Precious Jesus, you are the Alpha and Omega. Even as the Father made you the glorious covenant head of your people in the beginning of his way, so be my all in all, my first and last, the author and finisher of my faith. Precious Lord, may I, like Paul, be able to say, not as though I had already attained, because I long to catch up to and hold fast to you, Christ Jesus, even as you have caught up to and held fast to me. So come, Lord Jesus, to your bride, the church. Be the fountain of life to all your redeemed until you bring your church below to join your church above so they will dwell together in the light of your countenance forever. Amen. All right, let's get started. There's a lot of flipping around here with these psalms, so that reading plan is very helpful to know where we're going. We're going to start in Psalm chapter 56. I've got my Bible open. I hope you're following along with me in yours. Let's get started. Psalm 56. To the choir master, according to the dove on far-off terebinths, a mictum of David, when the Philistines seized him in Gath. Be gracious to me, O God, for man tramples on me. All day long an attacker oppresses me. My enemies trample on me all day long, for many attack me proudly. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? All day long they injure my cause. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They stir up strife. They lurk. They watch my steps as they have waited for my life. For their crime will they escape? In wrath, cast down the peoples, O God. You have kept count of my tossings. Put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? Then my enemies will turn back in the day when I call. This I know that God is for me. 
in God whose word I praise, in the Lord whose word I praise, in God I trust. I shall not be afraid. What can man do to me? I must perform my vows to you, O God. I will render thank offerings to you, for you have delivered my soul from death, yes, my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of life. Psalm 20, a song of ascents. In my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. Deliver me, O Lord, from lying lips, from a deceitful tongue. What shall be given to you? And what more shall be done to you, you deceitful tongue? A warrior's sharp arrows with glowing coals of the broom tree. Woe to me that I sojourn in Meshech, that I dwell among the tents of Kedar. Too long have I had my dwelling among those who hate peace. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. Psalm 140. To the choir master. A Psalm of David. Deliver me, O Lord, from evil men. Preserve me from violent men who plan evil things in their heart and stir up wars continually. They make their tongue sharp as a serpent's, and under their lips is the venom of asps. Selah. Guard me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from violent men who have planned to trip up my feet. The arrogant have hidden a trap for me, and with cords they have spread a net. Beside the way they have set snares for me. Selah. I say to the Lord, you are my God. Give ear to the voice of my pleas for mercy, O Lord. O Lord, my Lord, the strength of my salvation, you have covered my head in the day of battle. Grant not, O Lord, the desires of the wicked. Do not further their evil plot, or they will be exalted. Selah. As for the head of those who surround me, let the mischief of their lips overwhelm them. Let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire, into miry pits, no more to rise. Let not the slanderer be established in the land. Let evil hunt down the violent man speedily. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and will execute justice for the needy. Surely the righteous shall give thanks to your name. The upright shall dwell in your presence. Psalm 141, a psalm of David. O Lord, I call upon you. Hasten to me. Give ear to my voice when I call to you. Let my prayer be counted as incense before you and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not let my heart incline to any evil, to busy myself with wicked deeds, in company with men who work iniquity, and let me not eat of their delicacies. Let a righteous man strike me. It is a kindness. Let him rebuke me. It is oil for my head. Let my head not refuse it. Yet my prayer is continually against their evil deeds. When their judges are thrown over the cliff, when they shall hear my words, for they are pleasant. As when one plows and breaks up the earth, so shall our bones be scattered at the mouth of Sheol. But my eyes are toward you, O God, my Lord. In you I seek refuge. Leave me not defenseless. Keep me from the trap that they have laid for me and from the snares of evildoers. Let the wicked fall into their own nets while I pass by safely. Psalm 142, a maskil of David, when he was in the cave, a prayer. With my voice, I cry out to the Lord. With my voice, I plead for mercy to the Lord. I pour out my complaint before him. I tell my trouble before him. When my spirit faints within me, you know my way. In the path where I walk, they have hidden a trap for me. Look to the right and see, there is none who takes notice of me. No refuge remains to me. No one cares for my soul. I cry to you, O Lord. I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Attend to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. 
bring me out of prison that I may give thanks to your name. The righteous will surround me for you will deal bountifully with me. In Psalm 56, we recognize that this was probably written while David was in Gath, while he was before Achish. This, as you will remember, was when he pretended to be a madman and he escaped to the cave at Adullam. It wasn't exactly David's finest hour, but it showed his cunning. This psalm is a psalm of lament. David is in a dark and hard place. And those circumstances can serve to make two kinds of people. Either those that endure hardships become hard themselves, or they're so beaten down that they collapse under the weight and they are crushed. But there is a third way. That is the way of faith. This way does what David does and humbles themselves under God's almighty hand and trusts in his promises. This doesn't create a depressed blob of a man or a hardened stone of a man. Rather, it creates a fearless man. As David says in verse 3 and 4, he says, When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust. I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? David is in the unique situation of having been chosen by God to be the next king. I'm sure that feels like a distant memory at this point for him. There's probably doubt rushing over him. And that's a worse enemy than even his circumstances. But God has declared to him what will come. And if David loses sight of God's word and decides to focus on his circumstances, then he would sink into a pit or be hardened like a stone. God knows David's fears and his hurts. He says this beautifully in verse 8, where he says that God keeps his tears in a bottle. God has a bottle for your hurts and your fears as well. David takes this knowledge, and he has decided to trust God through the circumstances. In verse 9, he says, This I know that God is for me. How did he know that? How did he know that God was for him? Because he took God at his word. He believed that God does not lie. He had been chosen by God to be the next king, and God was going to keep that promise. And you might think, well, that's nice for David. He had a special word from God to fall back on, but here I am all alone, and God is silent. Don't be foolish. Know that you are today, right now, reading the living and active word of God. God has promised that those who humble themselves and put their trust in him will be exalted. That we will receive crowns, that we will judge angels. Am I tempted to doubt these things? Of course. But at the end of the day, I choose to trust in the promises of God that he who began a good work in me will bring it to completion on the day of Christ Jesus. In this I hope. I will meet my king face to face, and I will reign with him. But until that day, I say with Paul in Romans chapter 8, verse 31 to 39, he says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who can bring any charge against God's elect? It's God who justifies. Who is left to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, For your sake we are being killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. 
For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So with your hope in God, you can say with David, In God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can man do to me? Psalm 120 gives me encouragement that David was not always so confident. This is a short prayer of confession and lament where David asks that God would deliver him from his lying lips. Pretending to be a madman was deceitful. Lying to the priest Ahimelech was deceitful. And David saw the consequences of those lies that Ahimelech and his whole family, save one, were killed by Saul through Doeg the Edomite. This looks more like my daily prayers, handing over my weaknesses to God, crying out to him in my distress. But the amazing thing is that God hears and answers these prayers. You may not feel it in the moment, but keep coming back to God in his word, and he will keep speaking promises to his children, to us who trust in Christ. And he will keep those promises. He is a good and faithful father. In our last three psalms today, we think that they may have been written together. And Psalm 142 gives us the setting. David is in a cave. Which cave? Well, we don't know exactly. It could have been that cave at Adullam that he fled to after deceiving Achish of Gath. It could have been the cave where he would later see Saul relieving himself. And instead of enacting justice and killing him in his moment of weakness, he showed him mercy and trusted in God to vindicate him, saying in Psalm 140, verse 12, I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and will execute justice for the needy. In the cave, David recognized that he is the afflicted and the needy. He calls down wrath, and he cries out to God for vengeance. The fancy term for this kind of psalm is an imprecatory psalm. These are the psalms where the author's righteous indignation spills over into a desire for imprecation or wrath. In Psalm 140, verse 10, we hear this. David says, Let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into fire, into miry pits, no more to rise. But in the end, he doesn't raise his hand to enact this kind of justice on Saul. Rather, he leaves the vengeance to God, who is just. Anger is sometimes a good reaction to our circumstances, but we should be careful that in our anger, we do not sin. Leave the vengeance up to God. He will repay justly in his timing. Remember the words of Paul. Though it may seem like people are against us and that our enemies are all around us, we do not war with flesh and blood. That person that slanders your faith or who threatens you with a demotion or who shames you for living faithfully to the word of God, they are not the enemy, though they may be working on his behalf. We seek refuge in God and we trust that he will deliver us. In Psalm 141, I see David's longing to return to the temple. He opens the psalm with a reference to burning incense and to lifting up his hands at the evening sacrifice. He's turning this cave into a sanctuary. Though we love our church buildings, worship doesn't happen in a building or in a temple or in a tabernacle. And that's an encouraging premise, as many of us have been kept away from our churches due to the pandemic. Rather, worship happens in the hearts and minds of the children of God, whether they're in a cathedral or whether they're in a cave. As we come to Psalm 142 and our close for today, we come full circle and we see that David has been brought low. He is struggling to trust in God's promises, but he knows that though it feels as though he is alone and that no one cares for his soul, he confesses in verse 3, that when his spirit faints within him, God knows his way. 
How awesome is it to know that we have a God who has already been to and through our struggles? He doesn't just know our way. He has walked in our shoes in Jesus Christ. We have a great high priest who is able to sympathize with our weaknesses. He was tempted like us, yet without sin. He endured the cross and scorned its shame. And he has been in a cave too. But on the third day, he defeated even death and hell, and he escaped from that cave to show us that in his name, as Hebrews chapter 4 Verse 16 says, we should confidently draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in our times of need. Thank you for joining me today. I hope this has been encouraging to you. If so, please let me know by visiting the links that you find under the connect with us section in the show notes. I'm a simple man and I could use the encouragement. If you've been blessed enough that you would like to support the podcast, I would greatly appreciate that as well. You can go to buymeacoffee.com slash DBR podcast to make either a one-time gift or to sign up for a monthly recurring membership gift. Until tomorrow, keep reading and keep worshiping.